Welcome to Tech Notice, my friends. Now it's time to talk about the performance and benchmarks of this Threadripper PC, Bumblebee PC. Now, I'm quite excited about this because I've applied a few different testing methods to show you exactly and a little bit more clearly how good this PC is, and then to give you a better overview of whether you need to upgrade or if you want to upgrade or compare it to your current or your system that you are currently running. So without no further ado, let's jump in and let's talk about how good this PC is. Now you're gonna see quite a few different benchmark results over here, as well as the Adobe Creative Cloud benchmarks and the DaVinci Resolve benchmarks. So if you're a video editor or photo editor, you're gonna be covered over here. Also, you can check out the chapters below to skip into the most important benchmark for you. Now on the screen, you can also see a few different PCs that we've tested on the channel. So if you're not familiar with it, feel free to check them out on the channel, but just for like reference, so you know like how good this is and what we're talking about now let's start with Cinebench R23 now if you're not familiar with this benchmark then this one tests the CPU rendering the single core and multi core rendering and we've got a few different uh, PCs on the screen as you can see so first of all the single core speed for this Bumblebee is 1275 which isn't like particularly amazing single core speeds but where this PC actually shines is the multi-core speed because this is a Threadripper platform. We're losing a little bit of the single core speeds, which you're gonna see later on will affect like the Photoshop benchmarks and Lightroom active scores because that's where the single core speeds are used. But the multi-core is very good for like video editing, uh, for example, rendering, things like that. So this is where this really, really shines over here. And you can also see like some of the reference PCs as well as like the Mac M1 chip. So if you want to see that and how that performs, you can see them on the screen over there. Now, another test I want to test now from now on in the future as well for all the PCs we're going to do or what I've applied from now on is the 10 minute throttle test. So basically, we're gonna let the PC run for 10 minutes doing the Cinebench R23 multi-core test and then compare the throttle test after 10 minutes of the average of all of those tests and then calculate how much has it lowered compared to the just single multi-core test. What that basically shows you is the thermal performance of the PC. So the worse the PC thermal performance is, the more it's gonna throttle and the lower the 10 minute score is gonna be and then the more or the bigger percentage this lowers. So for example, this PC lowered the score like 2.48%, which is a little bit over the like kind of margin of error. So I would say that if it's below 2%, one to 2% can be margin of error of these tests. If you see over that, it starts to throttle a little bit. So as we can see, we can, we can see like a tiny, tiny little bit of 0.5, 0 0.48% of thermal throttling, which is, you know, because of the cooler and the heat we're actually pushing through of this PC. If you do want to improve the performance of the throttling, then it's probably better to go with a better cooler or a little bit different. So I would recommend the Noctua version for this Threadripper system and with two fans to, to get that down. But now we're talking about Threadripper system over here. So I'm not very optimistic that any cooler really would lower that down because like after 10 minutes of rendering, we're just pushing so much heat down. I think this is just what we're going to see like in real world performance outside of the benchmarks, you don't really notice it and you don't really need to worry about that. Next off is Geekbench 5. Now this one tests the single core and the multi-core of the CPU, but tries loads of different variations, loads of different things and loads of different applications and like a general overall score. And that's why it's good to see the Geekbench. So if, you, if you're just using the PC like generally for everyday work and doing a little bit of this, a little bit of that, then this tests like the single and multi-core of all of these different things and then gives a score of this. Now we see that the single core speed isn't that different actually from like a Ryzen 3950X 16 core, like a more mainstream PC, like high-end uh, Ryzen 9. So the single core is quite, you know, around there. The multi-core speed is still like absolutely amazing in this, like the fastest multi-core speed I've ever tested on any of the PCs in there. Also, the Geekbench 5 tests the uh, GPU scores as well. So the GPU scores rank into like three different categories. One is CUDA, OpenCL and Vulkan. It's just like a different parts of the GPU or different 
kind of aspects of the GPU because different programs build their system on a different aspect of the GPU, for example. So if you're an NVIDIA user, so for example, Adobe Premiere Pro and like the creative applications often use the CUDA aspect of it. Some applications like to use OpenCL, which is a little bit more old fashioned, but then some of the games, for example, use Vulkan titles. That just shows you the score of these different aspects. And as you can see, our RTX 3070 is doing very, very well over there. Feel free to test your system to see and compare it with these over there. Now, I'd like to mention that all the Geekbench 5 tests over there are the average of three to five tests and then combine the average score so they're not just a single test because I found that the Geekbench 5 is the most, sometimes you get a very high or very low speed. So just to average out those scores, we're testing them quite a few times. Moving on to Blender, which is another rendering test for the CPU, but very high end rendering quality. So there's a different test over there. We're running six tests over there. And this Threadripper PC, now this is what this PC likes to do. In terms of the Blender benchmarks, this is like the fastest PC I have ever tested on the Blender, uh, especially CPU rendering. So if you want like Blender heavy, if your workflow is Blender heavy, this is amazing system for you over there. And doing the same test on the GPU as well. So sometimes if you want to do the GPU rendering of this, and you can do that as well, but CPU rendering especially impressive over there because sometimes the GPU rendering isn't as good of a quality as the CPU rendering. That's why the CPU rendering of Blender is the most important when it comes to Blender. Now, before we move on to the Adobe Suite benchmarks, what is important, another thing on the PC is the SSD or different speeds of the storage system inside because that can often affect the performance of the program because it can't read the files fast enough or the programs fast enough. Now, in this PC, we're running three separate storage system. One is our OS drive, which is super fast, Sabre Rocket 4.0. And as you can see, one terabyte in size and the read and write speeds on Crystal Disk Mark, we're getting 5,010 megabytes per second read speed on Crystal Disk Mark and 4,267 megabytes per second write speed. Now moving on to the Blackmagic Disk Speed Test, we're a little bit of a difference over there because often the Blackmagic Disk Speed gives us lower scores, but still super, super awesome, very fast scores of 4,045 megabytes per second read speed and 4,013 megabytes per second write speed. Then our project drive, which is a little bit of a bigger drive, which is a two terabyte in size NVMe drive, M.2 drive, which we put also in there. This is where our projects live. This is where, you know, you put all your files for the video editing project, different things like that. This is two terabytes in size, like I mentioned before. It's a little bit slower, but plenty fast enough to read all your project files. So we're getting 2.6 gigabytes per second read speed and 1.8 gigabytes per second write speed, which is still very, very fast. In terms of the Blackmagic disk speed test, we're getting 2,234 read speed and 1,695 write speed, and that is megabytes per second. And the third storage solution over there is the archive. Once the project is done, all the files get moved onto the archive, or if you don't need those files, they'll get deleted. But the archive is an 18 terabyte hard drive. Now this is the largest single hard drive size or storage capacity you can have for a single hard drive. Even though it's a hard drive, it's still quite an okay read and write speeds. Like the read speed is 281 megabytes per second compared to our M.2 NVMe drives over there. Obviously it's got no competition to them but it's a bit faster than some of the older hard drives that are like 100 megabytes per second. And then the write speed is 272 megabytes per second. And then on Blackmagic disk speed, we're getting similar results, 266 and 262 read and write speed respectively. Okay, now it gets exciting because we're talking about the Photoshop benchmarks. Now this is tested on the Puget Bench for Photoshop. And it's important to know what is the baseline of the score. So basically the baseline score is like overall score 1000, GPU score 100, general score 100 and filter score 100. Now our overall score is 1008, which is a little bit better than our baseline PC. Our GPU score is 102.7, which is better than the RTX 2080 basically. But as you can see, there isn't that big of a difference between the RTX 2080 and RTX 3070 
even though our 3070 is much more powerful GPU, Photoshop doesn't utilize the GPU that much. So there's not that big of a difference. The general score, and now you can see this is 84.2, which is, you know, okay score, but it's about 16% slower than our baseline PC, which is much more affordable and much more older. And that is because the single core speed of that 9900K is much better than this Threadripper system. And that's why it's a bit worse because it likes to use that. Now the filter score is our PC is 17% better again and that is a little bit you know more to the multi-core performance and things like that but photoshop can't really utilize the multi-core that much that's where we're getting the score so overall we're a little bit better than the baseline but if photoshop is one of your main problems and, and you're doing a lot of photoshop heavy tasks or your workflow is photoshop heavy then this pc isn't particularly good for that uh, i'm not saying it's bad for that but just for the bang for buck it doesn't really make sense to build this for that particular reason. But if you're doing this on the side or this is part of your workflow, not the main workflow, then it's doing an okay job. Next up, let's look at the Lightroom Classic. And then for the baseline PC, we have exactly the same PC as before. Now looking at the Bumblebee score over here, we can see that our overall score is 1,352, which is 35% better than our baseline score. And most of this comes from the export speed. As you can see, the export of the photos, if you're doing a lot of exporting of photos or rendering the photos, then this PC is an absolute beast. As you can see, the passive score, which is what you do in exporting, basically, is 182, which is 82% better than our baseline. But then at the same time, the active score, which is more like changing between the tabs and actually editing the photo and moving all the faders and things like that, it's a little bit uh, slower than our baseline CPU or PC. It's because of the single core performance. Now moving on to Premiere Pro. If you're a video editor, this is very exciting one for you. Also, I'd highly encourage you to run these tests on your own to see like what your current PC is like, because you might not necessarily need the upgrade or if you're wanting to get a bigger upgrade, maybe it's not worth upgrading or different PC, but this will help you to gauge how good this PC is. Our baseline PC is a little bit different now than from the previous tests. Our baseline now has a Ryzen 9 5900X and the GPU is RTX 3080, 10 gigabytes. The RAM is 64 gigabytes, and I'm pretty sure this is 3200 megahertz because that's what Puget Systems is using for their things, and that's what I expected. The SSD is exactly the same. It's not PCIe 4.0, it's PCI 3.0. Looking at our Bumblebee over there compared to the baseline of the PC, our score is about 22% better, 1,227. Standard overall is about 21% better. Our extended export score is about 15% better. Standard export score is about 16% better. Extended live playback score is about 66% better. And I wanna put a little pause over here because basically this is one of the highest scores of live playback speed like ever I have tested. Well, for me, it is the highest I've ever tested. But also if you look at the Puget System database of all those, all some PCs over there. You can see that some of even the more powerful ones like the Threadripper 32 core or Threadripper Pro even PCs don't get that high of a score in the extended live playback score. That is very, very, very good. Now feel free to test your system and comment below like what is your extended live playback score. In terms of the standard live playback score, we're getting 161 0.8, which is much better than our baseline PC. At the same time, if you're familiar with the Peter McKinnon PC that we built, when I was testing that PC, exactly the same benchmark, then I was getting extremely high scores in the standard live playback scores, which is even slightly better than our Bumblebee score, which I'm very, very confused about a little bit. And I'm not sure what is happening over there. Maybe this is like the golden of the PC spec combination, but we're getting extremely high in the standard playback. But as you can see, the extended playback isn't that good. But standard playback uses more like more mainstream uh, and more like online content creators video codecs but the extended playback uses a bit hard like red and 6k and 8k codex so that's where it gets more complicated and where this pc really shines so if you're doing any like 8k editing for example 6k 8k then this is like the cpu you you'd really want but even the standard playback score is very very high and about 61 percent better than our baseline of the pc 
In terms of the FX score, we're getting 87.2, and I think that is because of the single core performance compared to the baseline PC. But at the same time, our uh, Intel Peter McKinnon PC, which is very good on the single core you know, speed, got only 64.1, which is even lower. So still, this PC is very, very high in terms of what I have tested and how good it is. GPU score is 91, which is obviously a little bit lower than the 3080 on the baseline, but this is still like the fastest I have tested on any of the PCs I have. Moving on to After Effects Beauty bench benchmarks, our baseline PC is still with the i9-9900K now, with the RTX 2080, the one we use for Lightroom and Photoshop. And looking at our Bumblebee score, this is the overall score is a 37% better. The GPU gets 7% increase in the performance at 107. Our RAM preview is 23% better than our baseline PC. Our render score is 24% better on the baseline PC and our tracking score is 64% better than our baseline PC, which is very, very impressive. Now, After Effects still likes to use quite a bit of the single core speeds of the CPU, which still isn't the best for this um, PC, but we're getting still very impressive scores. So if you After Effects is part of your workflow, you can expect this PC to perform very, very well. Even though this PC was really, as you can see, uh, focused on the Premiere Pro and the DaVinci Resolve, if you want to, and the performance in those programs for video editing, but it can do everything else around it as well pretty okay. Let's move on to the Resolve Puget Bench. And this over here, I tested with the free and the studio version. So basically, if you want to run the DaVinci Resolve on free and without using the studio version, then you'll see those benchmarks and then the studio version. Basically, the difference between the free and the studio version is that the studio version or the paid version basically gives you a little bit of a better performance. The free version is capping some of your hardware and can't use all of the hardware or doesn't let you use all of the hardware and some of the other things are watermarked but you still get the idea of how good it is on the free and studio version. Now, our standard overall score is 1,357. Bear in mind, our baseline PC has a 10900K and RTX Titan, which has 24 gigabytes of VRAM, which is very important for DaVinci Resolve, especially if you're doing like 8K plus video editing over there. So our 4K media score is 151. GPU effect score is 93 because Probably the VRAM is a little bit lower than our 3070. Our Fusion score is 163, which is quite a bit better. Now that was the free version. Now moving on to the studio version, our overall score is a little bit better, 1417. Our 4K media score for some reason is a little bit lower. I don't know why, it shouldn't really be that, but I tested it a few times, but I still got it there. Our GPU effects scores are a little bit better than from the free one and our fusion score is quite a bit better than the free one. Now I tried to do the extended overall as well, but it didn't manage to complete the extended overall test for the DaVinci Resolve because it ran out of GPU memories because the extended overall uses the some of the 8K clips, which needs a, more than eight gigabytes of VRAM. Now it should still run with the eight gigabytes of VRAM on these cards, which I know Puget Bench actually does, but for some reason doing different tests and different settings, it just didn't run on mine. So if you do intend to do like 8K plus video editing on DaVinci Resolve, I wouldn't really recommend it with this hardware configuration because most likely you're gonna run out of GPU memory. So the solution for that is to go with RTX 3080 or above the cards that have a bit more VRAM or 10 plus gigabytes of VRAM. Now this completes our benchmarks of this Bumblebee PC. Hopefully now you know how good this is and how this could improve your workflow or maybe not so much and you know that if it's worth upgrading to this PC. Now if you do want to check out the parts and the specs of this PC and what exactly we use over there, you can check out the links below where I'm going to leave all of these things as well as the recommendations for the graphics card if you do want to upgrade your graphics card to the 8K workflow which then would be an ideal 
best bang for buck. But all of this one I have over here is kind of meant for the best bang for buck and having that mentality in mind, how can we save the money as much as we can without compromising and the looks and performance of the PC and giving the best performance for that price. If you do want to check out other videos of this PC series where we're talking about why did we use those parts and why these are the best bang for buck, how good is it in actual live performance or live playback speed on Premiere Pro because as much as we talk about the benchmarks you want to see how does it playback on certain codecs and different resolution of video check out another video of that one if you want to know how this compares to Ryzen 9 and things like that there's other videos on the channel as well as the complete step-by-step -step build guide for this PC and how we did the paint job everything feel free to check out the other videos if you're new here and you like what you see consider subscribing and if you have any other questions I'll meet you in the comments below thanks guys for watching see you next time Bye-bye.